Hello ladies and gentlemen and uh, welcome back to Kickback Garage. As you see, I am out and about on the scooter. I'm just checking the jets and stuff. Um, I really want to go through the specs on this thing, so... It's a little bit cold. I really want to go through the specs on this thing, so uh, let me find somewhere to park up. And I'll uh, turn this racket off. What do you reckon? That's as good a place as any, isn't it? Bit of gravel road in. So what I think I'll do, I'll uh, pack it up here. And I just took you through the specs. This is a completely new rebuild. Beautifully. Hey, it's a heron. Nice. Uh, I don't think I can uh, <laughs> put you in front of the sun like that because you probably can't see a thing. Let me just park her up. There you go. Let me get off. Let me get off. Right, so. I'm committing a massive cardinal sin today. I am riding without my panels and my footboards. The footboards are for the painter. Uh, something interesting to note here is I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of the colour that I've chose. And in the sun here, it looks uh, pretty good. There you go, what do you reckon? This uh, colour that I chose, I've incidentally painted the side panels in the same colour as this. This is a uh, Volkswagen pastel green and it's really really hard to take photos of it so I hope it sort of uh, blings in the sun here and you can see it shows off my beautiful brown BGM seat. Uh, the little ride I had here now I can uh, definitely say that the BGM seat feels very comfortable. It's uh, not too soft, not too hard, it's sort of a, a Goldilocks position there when it comes to uh, seats and yeah I think it gives enough support uh, but it does uh, form your buttocks so I, I reckon that would be a very nice uh, long distance uh, seat. Anyway what I was going to do, yeah what I was going to do was uh, go through the specs of what I've done so I've rebuilt my Casa uh, case or the engine case as you uh, as you will uh, I've rebuilt it with uh, the BGM RT225 cylinder kit I am uh, as most of you probably know by now I am running uh, 62 times 110 crankshaft so I've got uh, 240 cc which is always very cool to brag about down the pub now uh, another new thing that I've done this year is as you probably know as well is this uh, great looking Avanti exhaust pipe and uh, I have to say it's quite loud <laughs> it's not as quiet as I thought uh, initially thought and it seems to rev on a little bit further than the, the BGM but this is a completely new setup this is the first ride I've ever done on this so I, I had to adjust the clutch a little bit um, so I thought I'd uh, try and uh, poodle around the uh, back roads here in my village just to get a feel of how the jetting is because the uh, the cob, which I'll go around here, maybe I'll be able to see it if I stand at an angle with the sunlight. We've got a PHBH30 and the initial setup in, on that at the moment is I get a very nice takeover with the 55 Pilot. Uh, I've actually got two screws out on the... Uh, on the air screw so that I, I might be able to actually bump it up a little bit maybe 50 even a 57 pilot on that thing for some reason uh, and then uh, screw the air screw in a little bit but uh, at, at the moment I, I quite like it like that so I might keep it like that uh, I've got 135 main which I have no idea if that's uh, good enough but I'm gonna keep an eye on the temperature and I'm not gonna uh, rev the crap out of it on this uh, 
on this video it's just sort of an, a first initial uh, test of the the kit that I've got going on here uh, I'm running the AV266 atomizer and I'm running the X30 needle uh, second clip from top now that that is <laughs> a very good starting point for most engines the uh, chisel speed exhaust that was I had to run a 268 atomizer on that but with a weak needle at x7 uh, and that's because it does it does pull a little bit more in the in the uh, mid-range now I'll, I'll try not to compare this too much to the ss240 but right off the bat it's uh, got a, a lot more uh, grunt a lot more mid-range but uh, I don't have that uh, kick in the pants uh, when I came come up, come up to about six six and a half thousand revs. I've got a massive kick in the pants, but with the chisel speed exhaust, it sort of stops at uh, seven, maybe seven two. So you get a massive kick in the pants, uh, which is very thrilling. But it, uh, the fun is really over quite quickly on the uh, chisel speed exhaust. So, like I've said before, if you if you want to go for a SS uh, 225 kit, then uh, do yourself a favour, put a, uh, a proper race pipe on there so you can uh, rev the crap out of it. But uh, the reason why I changed to the BGM uh, setup is basically because uh, I was missing uh, the mid-range. And uh, here in Norway, southern Norway, the uh, there's quite a few hills. And I was finding I had to change gear quite a lot. So, shall I start her up? We'll take a little bit of a walk around her. I don't know. I, I like that seat. When I put the fit the panels, I think it looks really nice. It's uh, I think it's probably Marmite and uh, very very individual if you like it or not. But with the green panels and with the footboards fitted, I think it looks pretty pretty classy. What do you think? Right, comment down below. If you don't like it. Uh, tell me about that as well, because <laughs> I, I, and I don't like green colours, that's the funny thing, I really, really don't like green, but um, it, it really looks, I think it looks uh, absolutely smashing, really, really classic, and for me, the reason why I uh, mess around with classic Vespers and Lambrettas is because they've got this iconic classic look about them, so let's start it up. Starts first kick, and as you can hear, the tick over is it's fine with the 55 pilot there. Uh, one thing you've got to uh, when you're setting up your pilot jet and you get a nice tick over, one thing to watch here is when you rev it up like this, you really want the revs to go back down to where tick over is as fast as possible. If you find you've got a bit of a lag, if you like rev it up and it doesn't buck down to uh, take over like this one does now, I'd say this is borderline. If it doesn't go back down to take over quite rapidly, then uh, it's running a little bit too weak. But uh, this one, ah, yeah, it's a little bit slow, a little bit slow. But I mean, it's not warm yet, so I'll. Uh, it's 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 okay it's okay so I might be able to get away with a slightly uh, larger pilot but that's something to do in the in the spring we're in the winter here and believe it or not even though it looks absolutely gorgeous the Sun is out it's absolutely beautiful here uh, it's minus three degrees and there are quite a lot of ice patches on the road so I've got to be really careful <laughs> when I'm uh, going down to the village here so let's uh, take it off the stand. <laughs> the, that's not really a good thing. Not having the footboards, the stand hasn't got anything to uh, ping against when I take it off the stand. So I have to put my foot behind the, behind the stand and uh, give it a bit of a shove there. I trapped my foot between there. Oh! <laughs> Initially, one thing about this seat, because I've uh, got used to race seats, is it's quite tall. So I'm, I'm actually on tippy toes. <laughs> <laughs> With a short arse, eh? There you go, nice take off. Let's see what she can do. Let's warm her up a little bit, shall we? Bit of off roading. <laughs> it's absolutely freezing. I 
I reckon it's quite loud. If you, uh... right, it revs up uh, quite quickly. I'll see how my gearing is as well. I've got a five-speed gearbox. It's it's pretty tall. I'm running uh, uh, 4.6 primary drive on this. Ah, uh, uh, she needs a she needs a warm up. It's really important when you're checking jets. Let's just see if she pulls. Nicely through the gears. Let me put my visor down. Right, don't adjust your sets just yet. A uh, bit of a technical issue there. <laughs> I uh, filmed the ground for the rest of the duration of this video that I made. And uh, it's, uh, although the commentary is quite good, uh, being me, the uh, camera angle has been knocked out of position and I'm just filming the floor. And it's all a bit nauseously, nauseously, nauseous. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, so what I did, I came home, I saw the footage. Oh my God, I have to do that again. So I jumped back on the scooter, uh, rode around the village. And unfortunately, uh, when I kicked the scooter over here at the garage, my microphone had uh, unplugged itself. So I rode around for another half an hour, uh, talking to myself, as I do, and uh, I have absolutely no sound. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to show you the footage that doesn't make you sick from the last video, but I'm going to do a little bit of a voiceover, which is the first here for Kickback Garage. So carry on. While it's a little bit boring just watching pictures and not getting that fantastic sound of my Lambretta revving its balls off, uh, I will put a couple of sound clips in this uh, voiceover so that you can uh, have a bit of a listen to it when it's uh, revving up there. So what I ended up doing actually is uh, when I came back after the um, second run, I adjusted my pilot jet. So what I want to do is tell you what my my jetting is at the moment. So I've got the 58 uh, pilot jet on, uh, which gives a nice tick over and it does uh, go from uh, revs to tick over a lot faster, which is what I prefer. Uh, I always set up the uh, pilot jet first. Uh, I'm running the 45 slide from MB Developments or MB Scooters, as it's called now. I am running uh, the same X13 needle and AV266 atomizer and it's running really nice. I actually went up on the pilot jet, no sorry, <laughs> the main jet to 140 because uh, what happened was when I gave it some proper beans and I let the uh, throttle, throttle off it actually accelerated a little bit and that is a warning sign that it's going a little bit weak in the uh, top range so uh, I fit the 140 and then it went fine. There's a lot of conflicting information on the internet when it comes to uh, running in. Now what I tend to do and this is probably the wrong way to do it but I've had no problems doing it this way. Uh, when I have a Nicosil line barrel, a modern Lambretta two-stroke barrel, then I tend to sort of head for the hills like we're doing here on the video and I try not to keep the revs in the same place. So I, I try to go through the gears all the time. Uh, I don't mind revving it all the way out to the, to the top, almost to the top of uh, what it's capable of doing, but I just don't keep it there. I think the, the key is really is uh, vary the revs as much as you can and also get a feel for how uh, the jetting is through the entire rev range. Because the problem is if you just put her around on your scooter while you're running it in, then you could be unlucky and you could be just sitting in the same rev range uh, at a place where you've actually got a weak cob. So that I think that's more dangerous actually than uh, revving it through the gears. But that's me, maybe a little bit controversial. Uh, write down in the comments what you think about uh, my running in <laughs> procedure. But seriously, I don't really run it in. I, I just uh, I give it some welly, but not. I don't like sit on the motorway at prolonged uh prolonged revs and the same as well i try not to just keep it in the low rev range uh, just basically because i need to vary that as much as possible so 
How is she out on the road? Well, I'm going to tell you. I absolutely love this machine right off the bat. Uh, very, very linear power delivery from that Avanti ST Xbox. The, uh, the scooter actually feels, <laughs> it might be a little bit boring for some, but it feels like a four-stroke scooter, uh, four-stroke uh, engine. Very, very linear power delivery. Uh, you can, you, you've got instant pulling power, but it just keeps revving on and on and on very linearly. What I mean by that is sort of gradually rises. Uh, unlike the Chisel Speed CST3, which sort of has this, reaches this peak uh, between, I reckon somewhere between about five, five and a half thousand up to about 7,000 RPM, it just takes off. Whereas this one just keeps going in its nice leisurely manner. But if you give it a fistful of throttle, it really does uh, go up into the revs quite fast, but it doesn't have the same sort of punch that the uh, power band has on the CST3. So I reckon I have achieved my goal of uh, making this scooter much more rally friendly because uh, with the CST3 or any expansion pipe for that, for that matter, you're really sort of chasing that power band when you're getting into the hills and stuff. And if you're riding with other lads that haven't got tuned scooters with expansion pipes, then it can be a bit of a handful because you're, you're forever changing gears. And when you get into the hills like we've got here in Norway in the mountains, you really have to chase it up the rev range. Now, what I found uh, throughout the day was that I was getting more and more lazy with the gears. <laughs> surprising thing here is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm running 4.56, I think, uh, final primary drive. And that is the tallest gearing I've ever had on a Lambretta before. But I can manage to uh, sit in fourth gear, very low revs, I'd say somewhere around the 2000 rev mark, and just it just pulls up the hill. And if I want to go faster up the hill, I just give it a bit more of a handful of throttle and she just zips up there fine. So no changing gears, a uh, very lazy drive if you want to. And it's uh, actually a lot of fun as well if you uh, sort of keep it in the, in the higher rev range, which is not really necessary on this because because uh, it just chugs along. And I'm really, really looking forward to uh, have a bit of a shootout with the CST3 exhaust on my son's Series 1. Because these engines are quite close together, but they're pretty different in characteristic uh, characteristics just because of the exhaust there. So I'm really excited to uh, get this out on the road. If we get a decent uh, day with nice weather, I'll uh, get it out on the road with my son. And we can have a bit of a blat because I really want to see if he can get away from me. I think maybe, maybe he can, but I'm not sure, to tell you the truth, because I think I might shoot off... Uh, before he does uh, up the hills and he's going to have to change gear slightly and if I was going to compare this to the SS240 that I had before with the chisel speed exhaust it's um, yeah they're like miles apart I think this will this will blow it out of the water on the, in the lower rev range but uh, it'll come screaming past in the end but uh, that's a re one of the reasons why I, cho I chose to change the setup is because I'm using these uh, on the rallies, uh, lots of luggage and stuff like that, headwinds and hills, and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, going to be a nice scooter. I'm going to give you a proper review uh, in the spring, and we're going to have a bit of a shootout with other exhausts, and I'm going to get uh, Shrek out the road, uh, out on the road on his, so we can have a bit of a comparison between uh, between these two. So it'd be really interesting. It maybe isn't quite as much fun. To ride as uh, the RT with the CST3, but uh, it's sort of grown up. It just feels very refined, very smooth, and uh, it's all all sort of grown up and matured a little bit. So it's not Larry Blairy. It's it's, but it's still pretty fast. You can feel it pulling. It just hasn't got that uh, 
arm pulling movement that you get <laughs> with when the uh, power bank kicks in on the uh, CST3. And I reckon really it's probably a little bit deceiving because the power delivery is, is so linear on this now. I reckon that um, it's gonna it, it it's gonna feel a little bit more sedate when you're riding it, but I reckon it's going faster than you think. So I'm really excited to uh, get that get this thing out out on the road, some with some others, so I can have a bit of a comparison with it. So the coast is clear. Let's uh, give it a little bit of a waz. Right, let me put my visor down first. Oh my god, I can't feel my fingers. Right. Change gear a little bit early in the uh, second there. Oh yeah, it definitely takes off. Oh, holy moly. Ah. So what I... That, yeah, that pull's really, really sweet. It's such an even pull. Which makes it um, not only a pleasure to ride, but uh, very easy to ride. Once again, I'm very sorry for the voiceover. I hate doing these things. So, and uh, this is the only one that I'm probably going to do, and the only one that I have done. But um, at the end of the day, uh, I had to do that because uh, tomorrow it's just going to be really, really poor weather here. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it turned out how it did. And uh, don't forget, do the old subscribe, write a comment down below, tell me what you think, tell me what you think about the colour. And uh, don't forget, do the old subscribe, grab yourself a t shirt, buy me a cup of coffee, and uh, I'll see you all in the next one. And the next video, I reckon, is going to be all about headlights. Ooh, exciting stuff. See you later, people. Ta So I think I'll uh, stick this little bit after the video. I just have to say, um, it's uh, turned my scooter into something a little bit more grown up. It just feels uh, much more refined. Lovely jubbly.